South Australia has been the site of many large and extraordinary events. From the massive Ackerman Impact event that we've already covered in a past episode, link to that in the description, to hosting one of the only known instances of a Felsic Shield volcano to exist on our planet. It hosts incredibly vast mineral deposits, especially in the area known as Olympic Dam, and it has this event to thank for that. It's safe to say all is certainly not how it seems to the naked eye in this part of the world. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at the Gawler Ranges in South Australia and discuss how this unique circumstance occurred to begin with. Felsic volcanoes aren't known for producing lava fields, but at Gawler Ranges, the lava field produced here was one that released an astonishing amount of rhyolitic and dacitic lava over a period of about 1 to 2 million years. This is the equivalent to a blink of an eye in terms of geological time. Rhyolite is an incredibly silica-saturated rock, and when it's in its magmatic state, this high level of silica, coupled with the normally lower temperature that felsic magma is known to exist in, serves to thicken the viscosity level of the lava, to the point it's rendered almost static. The fact that Gawler Ranges was able to produce a lava field that was not only deep, with some places buried beneath a depth of 300 metres worth of lava, but it also spread out very far, much farther than one would expect felsic lava to travel. But this also happened 1.6 billion years ago. The Earth was much younger back then. Life was almost non-existent. The Earth more or less resembled a wasteland with no vegetation, only rocks, wind, rain, and eruptions. Because of this younger age, many characteristics that we know today were altered back then, and this is one of the many theories that are used to explain the abnormally high temperature that the magma at the Gawler Ranges was seen to exist at, with it being between 2 to 300 degrees Celsius higher than the felsic magma of today. Along with this, though, was an oddity in the chemical composition of the magma, with it containing very high halogen levels that further served to thin out the viscosity of the magma. Approximately 30,000 kilometers cubed of rhyolitic and dacitic lava were rapidly extruded, and their eroded remnants preserve one of the most voluminous felsic magmatic events on Earth. In Australia, many of us are familiar with this landform derived from basaltic eruptions, often referred to as organ pipes because of the way they look. They are the result of large basaltic lava flows, which solidified, cooled, and cracked into these large hexagonal columns. It's quite rare to find felsic versions of this, for the aforementioned reason that normally felsic lava doesn't really flow. But in Agola Ranges, we have massive columnar jointing occurring, creating a spectacular and rare sight to witness. But how did this all start? Well, I'm glad you asked. After studying supervolcanoes for many years, I can say with confidence that the precursor to this event was a bad one, like really, really bad. Normally, in order for a supervolcanic complex to release lava flows, a massive eruption must first occur. This is so the batholith-sized magma chamber that exists deep beneath the Earth can degas to the point that this magma is able to be released to the surface in a non-explosive state referred to as an effusive lava flow. Effusive lava flows are very much like those witnessed in Hawaii, a more gentler, creeping kind, with very little to no explosivity associated with the eruption. As previously mentioned, this eruption is associated with the vast mineral wealth that we see in South Australia. The Olympic Dam Mine is a large polymetallic underground mine located in South Australia. It is the fourth largest copper deposit and the largest known single deposit of uranium in the world. Copper is the largest contributor to total revenue, accounting for approximately 70% of the mine's income, with the remaining 25% from uranium and around 5% from silver and gold. And we have this supervolcanic eruption and the associated lava flows to thank for that. So this is the story of one of the most unique and remarkable landforms to grace the beautiful country of Australia, a literal felsic shield volcano, something that we only really see basalt or basalt and andesite in. 
and something that we will never really see again on Earth. Thanks for watching.